I welcome you all for this NPTEL lecture on earthquake resistant design of foundation. And today we are going to discuss 26 lecture, and uh, we are continuing the third module of this course that is on pile foundation, which is the biggest module in this course. Within pile foundation, we was discussing uh, the piles passing through the liquefiable soils, and today also we are continuing with that. That is the second lecture. In, on piles passing through the uh, on liquefiable soils. So you could see the slides here, and in this slide, uh, as I mentioned, that this is the second lecture on piles in liquefiable soils. Now what we have here, let me add it, yeah. So third module and pile foundations. Within the pile foundations, we have discussed so many topics, and this is the last topic: design of piles in liquefiable soils, and second part of this. Before I go ahead, let me acknowledge, as was the earlier lecture, most of the contents of this lecture also can be in literature, which is a book entitled as a design of pile foundation and liquefiable soils, published by Imperial College Press and authored by Madhubhashi et al. The speaker is uh, grateful uh, to these authors to provide this material and uh, their contribution is gratefully acknowledged, and this is only for this lecture, not for any. Now, coming to the second lecture on liquefiable soils, what we are going to talk today is first is we are going to discuss inertial loading, then kinematic loading, then kinematic loading in laterally spreading soils, then limit equilibrium analysis in laterally spreading soils, and Limiting equilibrium analysis with non liquefied crust. And when we discuss this uh, with non liquefied crust, two cases will be discussed. One is stiff clay as a non liquefiable layer, another is dense sand as a non liquefiable layer on the top. So let's discuss first one inertial loading before we come to kinematic loading. When we talk about inertial loading, uh, you could see the figure 2.1. Where a pile group is there and it is passing through a soft soil which is under uh, underlain by a stiff soil. Piles are uh, pile tips are resting on the in the stiff soil, and there are two cases. One case is where pile cap rotation is not allowed, the second case where pile cap rotation is allowed. So both the cases we are going to discuss. What is the effect of inertial interaction? Between piles and soils. So here, the loading loading requirement imposed by seismic events on piles require different geotechnical and structural design of these elements compared with the design of piles under static loading. So compared to static loading, inertial loads which are absent in case of static loading need to consider dynamic loading. Now, considering the case of a uh, pile foundation on level ground, which is uh, shown in this figure, there is no slope, which comprise of a soft horizontal soil layer in which no soil liquefaction occurs and overlying a steep horizontal lay soil layer, and the pile foundation passes through the soft layer and rests on the steep layer as we already did. But one thing is important to note here that this soft uh, soil is horizontal. That is not sloping, number one. And so that means uh, we are not considering lateral spreading here. At the same time, the soft soil itself is a non liquefiable. So here we are not considering liquefaction. But for how the effects of inertial interaction, piles and soils, when we are not considering liquefaction, that, that is going to And that discussion is based on two cases. The first case, when pile cap is prevented. Uh, from rotation not allowed. So, this is a uh, pile cap rotation not allowed. The second case when pile cap rotation allowed. Okay. So, let us discuss when it is not allowed. Here, the earthquake motion can be transmitted first of all soil stratum into the softer layer, and this motion can be amplified as it propagates to the softer layer and finally transfer piles in the super. And this kind of a uh, transmission will. Circle vibration in the structure, 
imposing initial loading on the file here. What you have here, uh, the earthquake motion is come, come from down, it passes through the steep soil, uh, and then finally soft soil will amplify it, and ultimately they reach to the near pile heads and pile uh, capsules. And this will set tone for inertial loading. Now this inertial load has to be carried by the piles. If the inertial load is large, then piles can suffer significant lateral displacement. And depending on the steepness of the superstructure and the pile cap breathing capacity, pile cap can be either be prevented from suffering any rotation or some rotation can occur. If the pile cap rotations are prevented, then the piles will undergo what is called elastic bending and in extreme cases, plastic hinges can be formed. The pile or pile cap interface is indicated in figure 2.0. So this is the case when you are preventing the pile cap from rotation, there will be hinges will be formed and the pile cap will rotation here. Okay. Uh, now the second case, on another hand, the pile cap can undergo some rotation then the piles will suffer elastic bending, but the pattern of bending is opposite to the previous case. So you see, pattern, first of all, bending is higher compared to the first case. And the pattern is also different, which is opposite to the difference that we are rotating. Now, in this case, uh, the pile cap can go undergo some rotation, then the piles will suffer elastic. These types of behavior will be dominated by the stiffness Hello, soil layer. The lateral initial load on the piles will only displace the soil. When we apply lateral initial load, pile cap or pile head, then it will displace the wheel in shallow region near the pile cap. If the shallow layers in these regions are soft, then this can be a On the other hand, if the shallow layers below the pile cap come for a competent soil, then the lateral displacement of piles and the road piles cap will be stronger. The piles may attract large initial loads, initial loads the mobilization of the passive soil. Hence, initial loading on the pile is a dynamic load. Peak magnitude depend on the dynamic characteristics of the piles. In particular, the initial load will depend on the steepness of the pile relative to that of the surface. Naturally, what is the uh, steep soil compared to pile or vice versa? On that, this is it. Now, coming to the next part, this is kinematic load. Here also, we are considering a pile group and which is on the top of uh, their pile group, there is a what is called pile cap is there. And in this case, we have kinematic loading. So, uh, earthquake loading differs from other form of environmental machinery induced cyclic loading. This is normal case. How it differs? Because the in ground motion produce pile loadings in addition to the pile loadings, which is derived from the motion of the supported structure. And the in-ground motion generates kinematic interaction between the piles and the soil. As the soft soil layer undergoes vibration due to the arrival of cyclic shear stresses from the stiffer layer below, it will vibrate in the first mode with a natural frequency Fn, which is given by this relation in equation number one. In this equation, Vs is shear by velocity of the soft soil layer and H is the thickness. And it is assumed that this, uh, pi, uh, this layer is fixed at the base while determining this natural frequency. Now, as was the case for initial loading, for kinematic loading also we are uh, considering two cases. One case when pile cap is prevented from rotation first and another case when pile cap rotation is allowed. So, here you could see that behavior of the piles are similar what we have discussed, uh, seen in case of inertial loading. And there is a formation of the hinges near the pile cap. So continue with this. So what you have, uh, this, mo uh, uh, this motion, which is due to kinematic loading, is indicated as a free field soil displacement in figure 2.2. 2. 
the piles that are located in such a soil layer are forced to follow the motion imposed by the soil if the piles are relatively flexible then they will undergo deformations as shown in figure 2.2 on the other hand if the piles are relatively steep then in that case deformation they undergo will be smaller so in case uh, if it is steep piles then it will be smaller deformation in case of flexible then it will be as shown in the figure so it is assumed in this figure that piles are flexible here in this way the piles can attract large lateral loads that will act in the opposite direction to the imposed displacement due to mo mobilization of passive pressure hence due to the kinematic interaction between the soil and pile the deformation in the piles occurs in the deeper regions as indicated in this figure so when we talk about the inertial interaction on the difference was that this deformation was occurring in the shallow region but here the deeper regions will have more effect in case of kinematic loading now continue with that for the kinematic loading if suppose if kinematic loading is considered in a laterally spreading soil uh, in that case a more serious lateral loading condition of piles may arise when there is a non liquefied crust situated above a liquefiable soil deposit on sloping ground and such a condition will inevitably result in what is called in lateral spreading uh, during an earthquake event therefore inducing large lateral displacement from the piles and pipes so simply what what is the case here that suppose if you have uh, uh, you have steep soil then soft soil on the top of soft soil if you have a soil layer which is a uh, uh, non liquefiable or uh, that is that what is called uh, a crust when you have a non liquefied crust on the top of it so that means these piles will be passing through a uh, uh, steel layer uh, resting on steep soil but first pass passing through the steep uh, crust and then coming to the liquefied soil and uh, and let assuming that this uh, soft soil is liquefiable in that case the what will happen the top layer will uh, exert the lateral spreading to be considered in the analysis so in this case uh, normally the non liquefied layer that may suffer several lateral spreading may be cohesive layer in that case the lateral load applied by a cohesive crust can be determined by using shallow foundation bearing capacity factor for example if the clay crust which is overlying the liquefied layer had an undrained shear strength denoted as sc then the lateral pressure q applied on a rough square pile cap in this region can simply be calculated using equation 2 which is given by randlock and hosser by that means q is 3 pi plus 2 into s so su is undrained shear strength of the soil so this way one can determine this lateral pressure applied on the pile during the lateral spreading so you could see when the lateral spreading occurs the lateral pressure which is applied on the pile is quite large uh, in compared to undrained shear strength of the soil as so this was the case when we discussed for inertial loading and kinematic loading now we are going to the next part that is limit equilibrium analysis of piles under earthquake loading so for limit equilibrium analysis they are quite popular pertaining walls shallow foundations and other geotechnical structures it is possible to carry out limit equilibrium analysis analysis to calculate the bending moment and shear forces in piles in laterally spreading soils and such analysis are considered as an alternative to what is called the py analysis so similar to what has been done for retaining wall shallow foundation for this case also we can carry out the limit equilibrium analysis and these are alternative to uh, the load deformation curve so let's discuss what is limit equilibrium analysis when uh, during earthquake loading so in this case limit equilibrium analysis piles in laterally spreading soil so this is a case here figure 2.3 what is shown in this figure the simple case of single piles in laterally spreading soils overlying a dense soil layer and there is no non liquefied crust above the spreading soil so you have dense soil here on the top of it you have liquefiable sand and the when the liquefiable sand is there uh, the pile is passing through the liquefiable sand and located inside the dense soil and when you have this kind of scenario 
the length of the liquefiable sand is shown with here capital F. And in this case, it is straightforward to establish a limit equilibrium model using what is called the free body diagram, which is shown in figure 2.3b. And this type of analysis was uh, earlier presented by Dobry et al. in 2003. For relatively stiff piles, the results from the limit equilibrium analysis were validated against centrifuge tests conducted in loose deposits of saturated Nevada sand with the dense sand layer simulated by lightly cemented Nevada sand. So this was, uh, uh, as I mentioned, this is because coming from the literature and these are from the earlier what was the work done by Dobry, Madhubushi et al, Abdon. So what is in this case, this is in figure 2.3, how this is model, you could see here the modeling is done, that this is the length of the liquefiable sand and here the, uh, this on the pile, the pressure is applied, which is equal to the PL into D, where D is the diameter of the pile and PL is the uh, pressure in the liquefiable uh, layer. And the dense sand, because the hinge is formed here, so this dense sand is replaced by a rotational spring, which is shown in this case. So a free body diagram of figure 2.3 is shown in here. And continue with this, using this, so let's let's have some formulation. Let the soil resistance per unit area offered by liquefied soil is PL. Various I have estimated the value of PL to be between 8 kilopascal and 20 kilopascal. And this is based on centrifuge stress on flexible and ring piles in laterally spreading soil. And based on uh, shear velocity measurements were made in liquefied soil. So based on the test on the liquefied uh, the centrifuge stress, it has been observed that the value of PL may be between 8 kilopascal and 20 kilopascal for flexible and rigid piles. And these tests, uh, further details can be found in Dobri et al. And and Madhavushi. So these are the some of the references. Now using this, the force applied by the liquefied soil on the pile can be calculated following equation 3. What is this equation 3? Equation 3 gives the force which is applied on the pile. And this is PL into D into L. What is PL? PL is already we have discussed. That is the soil resistance per unit area. D is the diameter of the pile. L is the length or height of the liquefiable zone. So with that, we can find the force applied on this. Then the maximum bending moment which will, will occur at the interface with the dense soil and its magnitude will be. So uh, when where the maximum bending moment will occur? at the formation of the hinge, at this point, the maximum bending moment can be worked out using this relation half PL into D, DL square. Okay. So once you can find the force applied as well as bending moment. Next is suppose if this pile cap of uh, uh, resisting area AC is present at the top of the pile within the lateral spreading soil, if you have a pile cap which area of the pile cap is given AC, where AC was tip C, in that case, the force acting on the pile will increase by the amount PL into AC, and this will lead to the additional bending moment PL into AC multiplied by L. So the maximum bending moment when you consider a pile cap on the top of it is given by relation 5. Continue with this, the rotational spring PR is not required for estimating the maximum bending moment, However, a value of Kr is required if the lateral displacement of the pile top is required. So, for calculation of displacement, Kr is required. But for calculation of maximum bending moment, the rotational uh, spring value Kr is not required. If the lightly cemented dense end is assumed to have a rotational stiffness of 5738 kN per meter, uh, kN meter in, uh, per radian which was quoted by Dobri et al. in 2003. If this is the case, then the lateral displacement that pile top can be calculated using the relation 6, where the delta of is the lateral displacement of the pile top, m max is the maximum bending moment, multiplied by the L length divided by Kr, where Kr is the uh, spring constant of rotational spring. So using equation 6, one can find the uh, lateral displacement of the pile top using the maximum. So this was for uh, when the let, uh, in, when the pile is, is passing through the lateral spreading soil. Now let's discuss the case. 
when you have a presence of non liquefied crust on the top of this uh, liquefied well so, uh, soil layer and in this case we are considering two cases one case when stiff clay layer is there on on the top of non liquefiable layer in the second case when you have a dense sand layer so let's discuss first the case when you have a stiff clay layer so see in the figure so the problem is here it is similar to in the last case but what you have on you have now instead of two layers you have three layers that means on the top of liquefiable sand you have what is called stiff clay layer okay and uh, non liquefiable soil is at the down and then you have liquefiable sand in between these two layers so the points a and b where hinges are formed so a and b uh, so you can say height a b between a and b the liquefaction of the sand occurs so let's discuss the its uh, details Con let's consider uh, so what you have in this case uh, okay uh, consider the case of a single pile of diameter d passing through a stiff clay layer of thickness h okay so you have uh, here uh, thickness h and diameter d of the pile and a liquefied sand layer of thickness l before entering dense sand dense non liquefiable soils as shown in this figure the soil stratification is susceptible to lateral spreading and the stiff clay layer above the liquefiable sand will undergo lateral spreading and is capable of subjecting the pile to large lateral loads as passive soil tissue fragment so what you have in this problem so the top layer which is stiff clay is subjected to the lateral spreading and this also apply the inertial load on the system so for this problem dobri et al in 2003 described a limit equilibrium best procedure for similar soil configuration for a relatively flexible pile passing through a lightly cemented soil layer at the top and then through a thicker layer of liquefied sand before entering yet another layer of non liquefied material at the bottom which is also made of lightly cemented sand so this is the, the problem which is repeated again so the problem is similar the dobri et al problem was similar what is shown in this figure the same procedure can be modified for the case of a stiff clay layer at the top acting as a non liquefiable crust the general procedure of limit equilibrium analysis is described here and what is the uh, general procedure first of all see here when the sloping ground suffers lateral spreading following an earthquake event both the liquefiable layer and stiff clay layer on the top Will suffer lateral spreading. So lateral spreading will occur in the stiff clay as well as liquefiable sand layer. This will cause the pile to deform, as shown here, and free board diagram is also shown. The soil pressure and forces acting on the pile can be stressed, as shown in figure 2.4b. So you have here uh, 2.4b. So what you could see, you have stiff clay, you have liquefiable sand, and non-liquefiable. So in the top one you have uh, let's say a and b are the points between which it is expected that liquid suction the sand may occur while about a you have point b which is at the top of the stiff clay layer and point c is in between so point c is the point where there is a change in the direction of stresses from top to bottom when you go so the Point C acts like a plasm, where there is change in the direction. Then, what you have the horizontal forces is denoted as H A here, while moment is M A at point A. So it will be set to happen when at the same because you have the action and reaction. So M M A and H A only the direction. Same thing as for the pile tip, you have H B and M B and the direction. So. uh the pile to deform the pile will, in this scenario the pile will deform as shown in this figure the deform position of the pile is shown using the dash lines and free board diagram is shown in figure 2.4 okay continue with this so uh then we you have stiff clay as non liquefiable layer continue with this the same problem so let's consider point a and b on the pile at the top and bottom of the liquefiable layer let point d be the top of the pile at a certain depth which is z ts below the top of the pile 
if point C is considered, and this point C demarcate a shallow region of the steep clay layer, which applies a passive pressure from the down slope side onto the pile and the deeper region of the steep clay. So this is shown in the figure. For the rotational spring, the stiffness PR is assumed at point B. This spring models the resistance offered by the lower layer of non metal soil to the pile. So a rotational spring is also shown here. So this, this is attached to. Then assuming that the steep clay layer above the lithofiber layer has a unit weight of gamma and unrestrained shear strength S U, consider the passive soil pressure in this layer at point B, C and A. From point B to C, the passive pressure varies linearly from 2 SU to 2 SU plus gamma z. So which is shown in this figure. So here between P and B and C, it is starting from 2 SU at C point it becomes twice SU gamma z. Between C and A, what is the scenario? So the C point, the passive pressure is already given 2 SU plus gamma z. Gamma z here. But at the base, this is further increased to x plus gamma x, where x is the height of the uh, height of the uh, the uh, steep clay layer. So this was the variation shown uh, related to passive pressure in both the sections. Now continue with this. If suppose you have the instead of a uh, uh, steep clay layer, on the top if you have dense sand layer, then what is the scenario here? It is shown in this figure. You have non lithophile soil on the top, lithophile sand, and then dense. So, another common condition that is encountered in the field is a dense sand layer above the lithophile layer, and this can occur in the field due to natural deposition or densification of her prior to the construction. So, this may occur because the top layer may get dense, right? The water table could be present at a depth of x, thereby rendering the Shallow soil layer above this to be non lithophile. So, water table is at the junction where dense sand layer and lithophile sand is there. So, that means if dense sand is dry, so then chances of lithophile sand increases is very much. So, in this case, uh, for this case, let us include a fixing moment what is called M top at the pile head. So, you could see M top is the moment which is the fixing moment applied at the top of the pile. This moment could arise due to resistance to rotation offered by framing action of pile group or the rotation resistance offered by the superstructure. So, this was the case. Now, based on this, there are some formulations. When you have dense sand on non liquefiable layer uh, for limited to an, an alto pile in the presence of non liquefied crust, for the limited state shown in the figure 2.5. The following equilibrium equation can be written assuming that full passive, uh, passive earth pressure coefficient Kp in the sand layer is mobilized. So, for the limited state, Ha can be half gamma Kp gamma x by d and Hv is the same thing, but the addition Pl into Ld, which is the contribution coming uh, uh, for, for this. Uh, uh, this uh, this PL the pressure applied to the liquefied surface. So H A and H P you can see in this figure. Okay, and H A and H E H A is the here, while H P is the base. The liquefied surface. Similarly, M A is given from this relation, half K P gamma H two D minus M top. M top is already defined, and M V is for the case uh, at the point B. In that case, this is calculated from equation number 10. And in this case, M top is defined already. That is the moment at the top of the pile. So, this was the case when you have dense sand as a non liquefiable layer on the top of a liquefiable soil layer is passing through the non liquefiable soil or dense sand. So, this was all about it. And I appreciate your questions. Thank you very much. And we are done with this uh, pile thing.